Fred, I'm like you, uh, ask myself the uh, big questions and have throughout my life. Uh, and I found that uh, it, it changes as I learn things, as I wonder about things. But you as, a, as an astronomer, astrophysicist, uh, looking at the universe, uh, over your career, how have the questions you've asked, the big questions, the ultimate questions, how have they evolved and where do you see them going in the future? Well, that's a big question, yeah. but um, they've evolved quite a lot. So just to put things in context, I started being an astrophysicist in the 80s. Mm -hmm. And in the 80s, um, there were several questions that were on people's mind. One was, what is omega? The um, value of the total energy density of the universe. Is omega one? Is it less than one? Why is it one? And, if it, and, and what, why is that important? Oh, because that sets how the universe expands and right. what it will do in the future. Right. And um, at that time, I think the error bars were omega was between 0.1 and 2 or mm -hmm. something like that if you took sort of a broad range. We now know that it's 1 to within about 1% and maybe the error bar is less depending on how you do the data. We fight about the error bars, but it's pretty flat. So that's a completely different landscape of the universe. There we were worrying about well, the universe open, is it flat, will it recollapse? The answer is no. <laughs> we also did not know what the cosmological constant was doing. Now we know the universe is accelerating. That's another phase change. The universe will not recollapse. Yeah. At least it could, but never say never, but yeah. chances are it will continue to accelerate. The other cosmological thing on everybody's mind in the 80s was what is the Hubble constant? There was one group that was getting the Hubble constant of 50 in their units of kilometer per second per megaparsec. How, and how fast the universe is expanding. That measures how fast the universe is expanding. And the other group was getting 100. So 50, 100, that's yeah. a factor of two difference. All of us were just sort of um, smart alecky and saying, well, it's going to be 70. Yeah. <laughs> we'll just take the geometric mean or the yeah. mean of this and we're good. And guess what? Now it's 70, uh -huh. plus or minus a couple. Uh -huh. And we're, again, fighting over the error bars. Okay. So even though there's actually a little bit of tension between different measurements, it's much, much smaller. It's an order of magnitude smaller of, of discrepancy. So cosmology has real, really congealed down to... Um, that's why we call it precision cosmology. We know omega to 1% or so. We know there's a cosmological constant. We know there's dark energy. We understand Big Bang and nuclear synthesis. And all these things were being developed in the 80s, and now we kind of take them for granted. Mm. Now, the other thing that we we're um, looking at in the 80s was we wanted to say, or we wanted to see if there were brown dwarfs or not. We wanted to establish whether there were black holes or not. We wanted to establish whether there were extrasolar planets or not. The first brown dwarf was discovered in 1995. Mm -hmm. The first extrasolar planet was discovered probably in 1995, um, although planets around pulsars were actually discovered by Alex Wolstjen a few years late, earlier. Um, and then, in retrospect, some of the things people were looking at even a year or two earlier were actually planets. But anyway, we went from not having planets and black holes and brown dwarfs <laughs> to having planets and black holes and brown dwarfs. And now we're not worrying about whether they exist or not. We're worrying about what their populations are. And each year we're worrying about finer and finer questions of their populations. Mm -hmm. So there's been a real phase change in astrophysics in terms of what we've discovered in the last couple decades. Mm -hmm. And can you project forward in terms of what that means? Well, that's a tough thing. Um, yeah. It's always hard to predict the future. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I would say that in the cosmological realm, things are going to get messy because we've done the easy things. Right. Um, we know the um, values of the basic parameters pretty well, and we know how to do structure formation with dark matter and dark, the production of dark matter halos in computers pretty well. I don't do that for a living. The, the people that do this for a living are very good. and mm -hmm. They've kind of nailed that problem. We know how to make dark matter halos. The next step is to put the gas and baryons into the dark matter halos, and that gets messy. Mm -hmm. So the next 20 years in that realm of cosmology will be towards understanding all those messy processes of star formation and gas flows and stellar supernova feedback and disruption of the gases, and all of those things are highly nonlinear processes, like the weather. So progress will happen. We're going to make a lot of progress in the next 20 years. It's going to be a slog. So That's my prediction. I really don't know, of course, right? As you've lived through this process uh, and you have your own personal deep reflections on the nature of reality and what is reality, uh, how, what, how have your 
own personal ultimate questions, getting away from the specific yeah. astrophysics that you've done, but but obviously that that uh, in, inhabits your core. But w what are the big questions that you ask yourself, and how have those evolved? Well, for me personally, um, I've always gone back and forth between being a details-oriented person <laughs> to get down in the muck and do my equations and calculate things very precisely, and then taking a step back and asking big picture questions. So here we're talking about the big picture aspect of my work or thoughts. So I think when I first started, I was interested in sort of the big question of just how does the universe work? You know, where is the boundary between cosmology and where you can't say anything anymore, right? What are the horizons? Mm -hmm. Not just the physical horizons that we worry about in cosmology, but the horizons in knowledge and such. And um, I think the next big question I sort of um, decided to be interested in was the future of the universe, given that we knew everything about, not everything, but we started to understand the past of the universe. I wanted to see what would happen as we go into the future. And then more, more recently, the big question that I've um, been entertaining myself with is this question of counterfactual universes. If the laws of physics were different, how would universes be different? In particular, how would stars and galaxies and maybe even planets be different in those different universes? So I think I've kind of hopped from mm -hmm. one big question to another. Mm -hmm. <laughs>